and our guests are special and with great honor we would like to Let us greet Pastor Rufus Adjiboya with loud applause. Church, praise the Lord. Church, let us stand up. Let us, let us greet the anointed ones. Let us praise the Lord. Mike. I knew that there were supposed to be an international students, believing students, and we became friends since then. We repented in the same church. It's, it's a long story, truly. But Pastor Rufus, I want to hear him personally because, because if you read his books, if you read his books, the books are sold in our church. If you read his books, the preachers personally all the top pre preachers personally if you speak about the people who are the teachers the people with the teaching um, gift pastor rufus is one of the top five teachers that i know if to speak objectively objectively but if you say uh, with a the passion then he's the best teacher He's the best teacher, as for me. When we were young, I knew it already. I knew it already, that he is, he is one of the greatest teachers. But moreover, this is not the reason why I want him to speak. I want to listen to him with a different reason. He, um, there is a reason why I want to hear him because he knows what the Embassy of God Church is uh, from within and from the outside. When we are from, when we are from looking from within, we don't see what's happening. Who of you are in the hall? We are in the hall right now. We in the tent. 
who can say what's happening in that house up there while being here can you know what's happening up there same thing happens we are standing we are staying in the embassy of god and we cannot see what's happening outside we don't know we don't even know what we have we don't because everything is known in comparison and so the person from the outside can compare the person who knows what's outside he can compare we don't even know what's happening on our behind but he he sees everything from the side and so year from year he's telling me and he's encouraging me to go on and he was such an encouragement for me I want him to become an encouragement for you also for all the body of the embassy of God for all of you who are here and so Pastor Rufus bowing down to you congratulations dear church Hallelujah. I'm very thankful to the Lord for Pastor Sunday, for Pastor Bossi, and for an opportunity to even stay here. Truly to say, I was not attempting to teach because I'm learning. And that is true. And therefore, my short message today will be called What What am I learning from the embassy of God? Do you want to know what, am, what I'm learning from the embassy of God? I think it's very important and I'm trusting for God to encourage you a lot to encourage every person present here to everyone who would listen to me there are several reasons why I want to speak on this same just as pastor said I believe I believe you would be able to see from the side you'd be able to, to have a, a side view on embassy of God Additional to this, there are some things that are happening inside the embassy of God and those are the things that you got used to. You're thinking it's happening everywhere, but it's not happening everywhere. And so I would want you to hear a true viewpoint uh, on who you are, what you have. And I hope for God to be able, for me to be, for God to help me be able to reveal your eyes on who you are. Additional to this, uh, additional to this, I want you to see, and perhaps some of you um, already know it. That's why you're here. I want you to know the unique sides of the Embassy of God Church. Amen. I'll be. I'll be trying to be very accurate on my steps. On some of the points, I would stop and uh, speak in details. And I'll show you some of the passages from the Bible um, proving that it's biblical. The first thing that I'm learning, the first thing I'm learning when I'm here in the Embassy of God Church is passion. Um, the first thing I see when I enter the Embassy of God uh, Church is the passion to make a difference in the world. You know, it's impossible. It would be impossible to go through the terrible attacks that you experience without this passion. The passion that is a greatest motivator. The passion that is ruling over the Embassy of God Church. There are no success without the passion. There is no um, success without it, no movement to the front. Let me quickly explain. I'll just give you a short example. A few of the passages I'll show you. The Gospel of Luke, 22nd chapter. Luke 22, several first verses. Luke 22, 
perhaps when you read it with me, you won't see the passion here right away, but um, let me quickly read it to you. The Gospel of Luke 22. Six verses. First six verses. Uh, look into it, please. Um, you can see the desire of the Pharisees. The festival of unleashed bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leaders, priests, and teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. Then Satan entered into Judah Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, and he went to the leading priest and captain of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted, and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. One interesting thought is recorded in this passage. The Pharisees, the leading priests, they had um, jealousy uh, against Jesus. That's why they wanted to kill him. They were over overfilled with passion. It wasn't just their desire. There are many people who are good and they have good desires, but those good people cannot apply their um, desire because it's just a desire, you know, it's a wish. But um, the high priest, the leading priest, it wasn't just a wish, it was a, a passion. Passion, it was terrible hatred. They had one problem, you know, Jesus was very influential, Jesus was an influential person. And whenever there was a crowd, they were not able to go. He was as if an opposition, you know, they were not able to kill him. But because of their passion, they were able to find uh, the way out. There was a crowd of people following Jesus all the time and they wanted to kill Jesus. And so there, there was a way to actually escape, both escape the crowd and kill Jesus. The Embassy of God Church, and this is one thing I want you to see. Both the people who do evil, both the people who fill the earth with an evil, both the people who are doing, uh, who, who proclaim the message of the gospel, they have the passion. Both of them have the passion. Those people have the passion toward killing, to destroy, to get rid of. They, want, they wanted to get rid of the one who have the answer. But in the embassy of God church, I can see it very clearly that through all the problems that you experience on your way, through all the barriers that stay on your way, because of the passion, you were not able to calm down. Of course, you know, I saw it once that the thing that are happening here, if this would have happened in the other church, in the other country, the church would just calm down and um, just fell off. I, I'm going more into the details about it a little later. In Jeremiah, in the Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, the prophet, in the 20th chapter, um, it, this story is described there, but the story is about the situation in the life of uh, prophet uh, he was carrying the message to the people he spoke from from the lord toward the people he wanted to um, protect the people against the judge and he was proclaiming for a long time he was saying if you do not repent the judgment would come but the time came when people rejected his message moreover they persecuted him he was always rebuked there was a resistance against him and there was a time when he decided that he would stay quiet. You remember this story. He said, okay, I'm, I'm shut up. I'll, I'll just shut up and will not say, he said. But because, because he was filled with the word of God that was burning in his flesh, he was not able to stop. This is a fire that is burning in his bones. This is what I mean. There are different conceptions 
all those conceptions, uh, they have system in them and they have to be applied. And some of the truths, they're quite complicated, but uh, um, it is a unique thing to be able to simplify it, to simply present the complicated truths so the truths would be applied. Uh, for some of the people, it's just important just to listen. But the people of the God's Embassy, they're not just listening to the sermon, they're not getting enriched with their mind understanding, but they're trying to apply the conception uh, and the reason why it's possible is because the conception is quite simplified, not in the sense of losing its uh, richness, but in the sense of understanding. You just see the formula how to use it. The visible God's presence and the Holy Spirit in action. You can be in the theory, you can, you can have a result uh, based on your skills without the spirit. Some organizations have result, but there is no power of, power of the spirit. But every time we're here, we see the spirit of the Lord in such a present way, in such a sensitive way, in every layer of the ministry, it is clearly understood that it is God in action here. Amen? Because a man cannot do so. The testimony that you've heard, the testimonies of the transformation, who can, who can do such a transformation but not God? Who can transform uh, the people's heart? who are raising people from nothing, who, are, who is raising people, the broken people. And therefore the ministry is not dried, but the God Spirit is the one who makes it living. The next point, the sacrificial heart, the dedication, The dedication, the sacrificial heart that attracts, that contaminates, that infects the people in the, in the good side. It, it infects. The Bible says, whatever you do, do from your soul, do with, with the joy. And whenever I see how the pastors behave in the embassy of God, whatever they are doing, they're doing it from their heart, they're doing it as if for the Lord personally. They're doing it from their heart. They're not looking for their own good, for what they'll get from this, but they're doing it for the Lord. It is their sacrificial heart. This is where they're expecting their reward. And friends, we have to live it. This is the sacrificial heart that infects in the good way the others. That's like, what, 15th point or so? 16 then. And the last one, the radical face that casts away the fear, proved in action. The radical face that casts away the fear and is proven in, in works, in action. The fake face casts out the fear. And what I see in the embassy of God, there, there are no fear to start to conduct the lack of fear. And this is a great proof that the face is a living face. It's radical face and you can see it in action. I can continue on with this list, I tell you. But I'm going to stop here. Because I still want to read uh, the congratulation um, passage. I didn't know I'll have a chance to actually stay on the stage and speak. I didn't know this. I found out about it just a few days ago. I came here to learn and I'm telling you what I'm learning in the Embassy of God. Do you see all those 15, 16 points about yourself?
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Do so. It is a unique church and the model of your church is unique. God is building a unique church here. And I'm so thankful to the Lord for this church. And I want to congratulate you. I want to congratulate the pastor, all the members of the Apostolic Council, the, the church with the full age. I want to read a letter that I wrote. I thought I would not have a chance to read it out. I thought I'll pass it to, to the pastor, but I'll read this letter now. Dear church, God's Embassy Church for all the nations, the Embassy of God Church, dear Pastor Sunday and Pastor Bossi, I congratulate you with the full age of 18 year anniversary. Through the 18 years, God again and again revealed that His will and His blessing is over you. God has proven that the gates of hell would not overcome the church, the church that is built and uh, structured by God Himself. If this church would be um, God's makeup, there would be nothing after it. But the longer the church grows, the more trouble it goes through, the more persecution, the more influential it gets. We see that the same situation happened even in the old Israel and in the history of the early church. The more persecution, the more trouble and problems the church went through, the more, the quicker the church grew. Hundred ninety-seven year of our age, Tertullian writes to the Roman uh, emperor. He's saying, he's saying against uh, the mm, false accusation against Christian. He's saying that uh, the pastors of Christian they were the most loyal Roman uh, citizens, and they cannot be persecuted. He said that the persecution from the Roman Empire could not ruin the Christianity. He says none of the cruelty could stop Christianity because the Christian received it as the temptation. Tertullian writes further on, he says, you can kill us, you can bury us, you can judge us, you can burn us, but um, your unrighteousness just proves our iniquity, uh, just proves our um, righteousness. The harder your persecution are, the quicker we grow. For 18 years, Eighteen is ten and eight, and I think it's a prophetic meaning for the embassy of God. The ten is the number of temptations, but in every every um, suffering, every trial, there is always a grace, at least half of it. If you divide ten by two, you would receive five. In every trial you go through. God have a double portion of grace. Thank you for your faithfulness, church. Eight is always the eternity. It's always the beginning of a new era. Whenever the trial stops, the new start happens, the new that was never before. Therefore, I want to encourage you, you're a unique church, and I want to encourage you to continue on in what you're doing from me and from my family, from our church, let me congratulate, from my church in Latvia, the spirit and the truth, let us congratulate with your full age.
Yes. Well, who have you now got who Pastor Rufus is? Now you know. I told you. For me, if, if uh, to speak personally, he is one of the best teachers. One of the best teachers I know. He wasn't even teaching now. He wasn't teaching. He was sharing, sharing, sharing his thoughts. But this message will enter the history when the history of this uh, church would be written, this part, this sermon, this teaching would enter it. Vladislav added one other thing. Vladislav, can I? But you have to be quick. If, if you ran quickly, I'll give you a mic. Greetings, church. Congratulations. I suggested for Pastor Rufus to write a book. Uh, the book about those uh, different differences in the embassy of God are uh, filled with the examples, with the testimonies of the life changes. Just quote, what, what, I, what I learned from the embassy of God. What I've learned from the embassy of God. What I've learned from the embassy of God. You know, just call the book like that. And we can write a book just step after step, like, like a uh, study book, not just a book, but a uh, study book so people could uh, learn and um, e experience, gain our culture. So the next generations would follow it and would see um, the basis of our foundation. How many books are translated? Can we can we bring some of the books of Pastor Rufus? Can we? I suggest for you to buy the books of Pastor Rufus and and buy them and read them. They're great. They're great. His teaching is great. He's very clear. He is very sincere. We didn't even know what you were telling us. We didn't know. Maybe some of us knew, but not all of us, definitely. Some of the people couldn't even name 16 or 10 uh, changes. Well, uh, I'm sorry for saying this, Pastor, with all the respect. But if you ask what is the um, good sides of the embassy of God, you wouldn't be able to explain. Because... This is, this is truly a look from with, without, from the side. When you said that the gospel of the kingdom is preached everywhere in the churches, I hear it a lot too. And I agree. But the example of behavior, many people, many people teach about it, but uh, they were not able to create. And while listening to you, The bishop has the teaching, the doctrines of the um, embassy of God. I, I really, really like how you presented it. And so we need you. We need, we need him? Yes, we do. Let me just say that whatever the pastor said, whatever Eugene said, this is the reason why many people, you know, when, when they hear about the problems in the embassy of God. They think we are just the church. And so they leave the church. When they leave, they get into somewhere else and they say, where did we, what did we leave? And so we are, we are not the simple church. You only grasp it when you go away from it and when you get somewhere else and you understand then. I know all those points, however, you know, I could, I could name all of them. I've created them. I've, I gave them, I gave the birth to them. I would add another 10 or 15 to them. 10 or 15 to them, I would add. You see, all the things that we have is not one action. And it's, it's not um, an accident. 
Pastor Rufus is not speaking today, but when you ask him about the Pastor Sunday, about Pastor Sunday, if you ask him what's special about Pastor Sunday, he would tell you, he would say that one of the qualities of Pastor Sunday, he's uh, very strategical. He would, he would count several steps up front. Nothing happens here accidentally. Everything is happening with an understanding 50 years up front. All the things we have is counted 50 years through. Those of you who know me, all of my behaviors, all of my uh, behavior, all of my works, all the things that we do today is counted through. I look 300 years up front and I receive the dictate from, from the future, from the front. As if I live there 200, 300 years up front, I see what's, what we need to do now in order for, for it to work 300 years after. And so the embassy of God is not a work of today. It's the work of 50 years in front. And so the people who live today, they cannot understand what, what we do, how we do it. The bishop talked to me recently and he said it very well. He said, I saw it. He, saw, he said, uh, not all the people see it, but what we do, the model, is the model that would work for 300 years in the front. Thank you. Let us praise the Lord. Let us give God the glory. I want to greet the church. Let's greet Raman. Raman of Cherenka. A pastor of the Baptist Church in our region and through all the persecution against him also he receives us and he is a friend of us doesn't matter how um, how unprofitable it is for him dear church for me personally for for my family from our Baptist Church Spiritual Revival, I greet you all. I greet you with the full age, with your full age. The last um, time I said, um, it is a good thing to speak shortly, they'll be called for the second time and now I'm called. And so I'll just say short. Dear Church, I want just to um, leave a wish. There are seven letters um, in the Revelation, and they are given uh, to the seven churches through, the, uh, through John. The sixth letter is the letter to the Phil Philadelphia Church. The door is open in front of you. Nobody can close the door. Praise the Lord. Dear Church, we are living in a unique country of the former ex USSR. We have the biggest freedom. And praise the Lord for this great freedom that we have. The Lord opened the door in front of us. And God opened the door to do whatever we can. Whatever the pastor said, thank you for system, uh, systematical um, teaching that they pass, Pastor Rufus uh, taught before me. Praise the Lord that in the needed time, God is raising people. I start to think why God is raising the foreigners. And I start to analyze that God is raising the people who doesn't have the communistic, Soviet and religious complexes. Because the complexes, they kill the talents. But when you're free, it opens the doors. And praise the Lord for Pastor Sunday, for Pastor Bossi, for your wonderful ministers, for Anatoly Belanoshka. Praise the Lord for your apostolical team. I had an honor to meet one of the unique people. Let God bless you all. And the last thing, once Jesus said, look at the fig tree and the fig tree around when I look 
at the Israel and the trees around him, we see that God is acting in Israel. As a Christian, we see that there is still a time for the church. We don't know how long this time will continue on. But Christ is saying, if I'll close the door, nobody will open. In the history, there were times, and the time could repeat when the doors will be closed. But since the doors are open and since we have a chance to work with the Gentiles, while God still works with the church in all the world, there were different people in front of the seat of Christ in, the, in heaven. Do not put your hands down. Do not be broken when people want you to be to when the people want you to break you. The work that you've started continue on. Congratulations.